Here is the pickle. Nobody gave names, so unless you switched, this is Petey the Pickle. That's his belly button. You like his belly button? Petey the Pickle. And, you know, like I said, this is basics. Basics, basics, basics. We are not going to um, do this the exact way. Thank you, Tim. We're not going to do this the exact way. That's that CD training, I guess. Um, the way the Egyptians did it. But this is going to give you a good, fun idea. So, um, uh, with the body, there would be four jars, okay? I, I didn't get jars, but... Uh, and I'm not going to use my my ones I have on display for obvious reasons. But there would be four jars, okay? They're usually made out of limestone or pottery. And they're called canop canoptic jars, Okay? So this person just died, and um, they want to they want to um, embalm him, which you know becomes a mummification because of the desert and the, the nice dark tomb, dry tombs. Uh, that's you know how they became mummies. So the four canoptic jars, there was uh, four of them. Let me show you them. Okay. Now, I'm not going to say everybody's names because, you know, it's been years. But there was the human head. I forgot to peek at my cheat sheet. Okay, the human head held the liver. Okay. Yes, I did embalming for a job before. I went to mortuary school. Oh, R.A.P.P.D. So, the first one was the human head that held the liver. Okay, the liver is to the is to the right of uh, the belly button and up. So the liver would be right about here. Okay. Now, if you look like I'm pointing to the left, you got to remember when you're looking at somebody, their left is your right. So liver is on the right side, right about there above the belly button, and the diaphragm obviously separates the uh, thoracic from the abdominal cavity. And then um, the next one, the jackal, which uh, most people call Anubis, which happens to be the god of embalming, the jackal held the stomach. Okay? So that's the jackal. The falcon held the intestines. So, you know, the intestines basically are the belly button area. Large and small, that held, uh, you know, your poopy. There's the falcon. Okay. Now the next one is uh, the mystery jar. Because the, the mystery jar, for the most part of history, was a baboon called Hapy. Kind of like Happy, but H-A-P-Y. Or some people spelled it H A P I. Hapi was a baboon. Okay? However, this held the lungs, by the way. The lungs jar also sometimes was a uh, ram or a goat with curved horns or a cat. And the picture I have is of the cat. So, <clears throat> human liver. Anubis the jackal was the stomach, stomach. <clears throat> the baboon or cat or, <clears throat> or goat was the lungs. And the falcon was the intestines. Okay? Now, with the, uh, with the brain... The Egyptians didn't see much of a use for it. Uh, they didn't understand it. They couldn't see a function. They couldn't find the food. They couldn't find the poop. They thought the brain was a useless organ, but they did see that it seeped and, and decomposed. So they would basically get a hammer and a wooden stick or a metal stick, go up, hammer that shit in, break through the cribiform plate, which is the plate that separates um, the top and bottom part of your your brain your head that your your brain is resting on okay 
So they break that on both sides with a hammer and stick or a metal stick. And then they would get another tool. I'm just using the thick end. They would have a little scoop in it. They would go up and scoop out the, um, the brain matter and just throw it away. They found it useless. So, um, Peggy, would you be my cameraman? Can you see me? So, <clears throat> what, what they would basically do is they would uh, only make an incision to the right of the belly button, okay? They didn't go all the way up to the chest and they didn't go down the middle like you see in modern autopsy videos. And they would they would get out the intestines, save them, the lungs, the um, <clears throat> the liver and the stomach, put them in their canoptic jars. And this isn't as forgiving as a human, so forgive me. They would take these things out, put them in the jars. So I'm just going to symbolically do that by putting them on the side. One... Two, three, four. Okay. Then in each of those canoptic jars, they would put whole, uh, oils um, in the jars, and they would be buried with the body and with the person's possessions. So, Peggy, if you could. Go get me the um, teacup. Um, then after they uh, took these things out and they, they scooped out the brain, they would fill the body up with dried flowers, maybe some sawdust, salt. Okay? I'm going to be a little sloppy because it's just a pickle. He won't mind. Okay? Has a nice smell. Some um, the the Egyptians were big with uh, uh, cinnamon back then, and cinnamon also had a great uh, preservation uh, uh, not preservation me medicinal characteristic as well. Plus being a season, so we're gonna we're gonna stuff that orifice real good, and it's gonna work as a second factor too. Because when I sew it, it's going to prevent the liquids from wicking and the body leaking. Now, they would use like a twine, okay? This is way too thick for a pickle. I would destroy it. We're going to use a little sewing needle. And I've never sewn a pickle before. It might not work, but I'm going to just give you a quick tutorial. We're going to go through, find the loop. Pull it in, okay? I'm not pulling very tight because it is a pickle, if this was human. Now there's two kinds of stitches. Mon I don't know what kind of stitch the, the Egyptians used. This is a loop stitch where you're basically going straight through and tie. Straight through and tie. Now, if you want, now see I just broke the pickle, but we'll just go through that again. If you want a stronger stitch, you can go straight through, go through the loop, go through the loop, pull, go through, go through the loop, pull. And why that's a stronger stitch is because you're creating knots in between each stitch. Now the last stitch I want to show you guys is the baseball stitch. You're going to start from inside the incision, go one side out, like this. Then you're going to go inside the incision, like this. Oops, sorry about my uh, stolen crab fork there. And I'm just going to go back and forth, just to show you a different kind of stitch. And that's a baseball stitch. And if you did this with thicker thread, you would see that it resembles... Uh, how a baseball is stitched up. 
And this is probably the most common um, post-mortem stitch of modern day uh, science. Then to, to finish off the, 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 the post, usually what I do is I'll go once and pull, go through once again, go through the loop, pull, and I already got a nice knot now. I'm trying not to rip my pickle. Cut the rope. Oh, that's, that string was a lot stronger than I thought. So, wipe my hands. Now, what I would imagine is a good funeral director, and I'm sure a good mummifier back then too, they would want to make this sealed. Now, a funeral director, because you don't want, you want to prevent leakage, like, a funeral director would put embalming powders in there before they would stitch. But you also want to make sure that the outside doesn't leak. What a funeral director would do is get like a rubber glue, go over these stitches, and then put some cotton swabbing on top. Now, I know the, the Egyptians didn't have rubber glue, so what we're going to use is wax. I don't know if that's what they used. It's what I'm imagining that they probably used. Peggy, if you can get the candle for me. So, I don't know if you guys could see me because I don't have it on selfie mode. Thank you, Peggy. It's still lit. It's still lit. Okay, can you see me? So, this is just a way to seal the wound. I'm going to pour wax because I can't really imagine what the Egyptians could have used. But this would definitely work, okay? So you see this is crude. Now obviously taking out organs, putting them in oils, throwing away the other organs, throwing away the brains after they, they scooped out through the nostrils. And um, that, all, that all helps with preservation, but it, um, it doesn't make a mummy. It makes, it makes um, a somewhat preserved body. So... Other than the natural circumstances of the tubes, tombs, what really helped was the, the, uh, the salt chamber. And the body would go into the salt chamber for about 70 days. Peggy, could you get my salt chamber in the salt, please? We just finished what they thought was embalming or mummifying the body. But what really helped was uh, the salt chamber, which is next. So let me switch the camera back. Thanks for coming back, Tim. Troy, thanks for coming back. Okay, Peggy, if you could switch it over, turn the camera. Can you see me? <clears throat> so here is my makeshift salt chamber. And the reason why I picked this container is because uh, it's pretty much airtight. So new air isn't going to get in. New bacteria isn't going to get in. And um, it's going to recreate the dryness of a nice dark um, tomb in the basement. Oh, I, I did forget to talk about uh, caskets real quick. Uh, there's there's um, many different types of caskets. Uh, the term coffin is something very specific. That's what they used in the old cowboy and Civil War days and Count Dracula. That very specific shape. That is a coffin. That is one type of casket. The, the Egyptians would eventually go into a sarcophagus, which is a body-shaped casket. Just wanted to clarify that because I did forget to talk about that with funeral directing. So I do have some salt in my salt chamber. And here is uh, Egyptian embalmed Petey the Pickle. And can you see him laying in his salt? Oh, I, I forgot one thing, Peggy. I'm sorry. Could you, could you give me a little glob of uh, hand lotion? Little, just a little glob. Okay, guys, keep the dirty jokes to a minimum. I'm going to lube my, uh, my pickle right now, okay? So they would get essential oils and very um, holy chrisms, and they would uh, anoint the body, okay? Then, Peggy, could you get the perfume and spray? give the body just one spray? 
and we're symbol we're symbolically going to perfume the body. So just just give Petey a, one spray of perfume. Per oh, she gave him two sprays. This is the best smelling pickle I've ever smelled that's not smelling edible. So then after the body's been anointed, oiled and perfumed, the body would go into the salt chamber. Okay? Then the name of the salt, I wrote it down because I always because I'm an old man and I forget. It was they use natron salt. Well, I'm not going all the way to Egypt to get natron salt. Iodized salt is fine. They totally packed the body in natron salt. And they would keep it into this in this tube for 70 days. 50 to 70 days is what most of the writings uh, said. And what's going to happen here, as far as the man-made, remember we talked about man-made and natural mummification? This is right here is primarily their man-made part of the uh, mummification as we all know we're mostly water so let's say PD was a 150 pound man after he comes came out of the salt chamber he would be 25 to 35 pounds that's it after only 70 days and the salt around him should be hard because what's happening is this salt is going to be sucking every morsel of uh, Petey's liquid and it's going to obviously harden the salt and after Petey loses all his fluids uh, he's going to be in a block of salt and they would take his body out 70 days later, chip it away, clean him up. He, now he's very fragile. He's very fragile and he's very um, light. Okay, he's lost a lot of body weight. So, after they chipped away the salt and cleaned him up, then they would wrap him. And it would help keep his body together because now he's very brittle. And they would put him in his tomb, which was not made of plastic. And they would put him away. So, guys, in about 50 to 70 days from now, we are going to take Petey out. I'm going to show you what he looks like. And uh, then we'll wrap him. We'll use toilet paper. That will be the most fun. So, I got I, guys, I really hope you thought this was... A little informative, a little fun, a little crazy. And if you found it interesting, and maybe a little wordy, please share it. And let's see what PD looks like 50 to 70 days from now. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all next time. Bye-bye.